Right. Uh, as it says, I'm Dave McAvoy, work for JCD Course, Marketing Director, and I'm going to talk to you about a um, new concept we started, which is called Channel 6, which is about a new language, which you might find a bit strange coming from some bloke from Sunderland who hasn't quite mastered English yet. <laughs> so, a new national channel. But first of all, I wanted to share with you just a couple of pieces of news from some industry research which came out this year. And it's done by a guy called Justin Gibbons, a company called Work Research, and they do it every year, and they speak to a couple of hundred agency planners. So I'm going to tell you what the top three things on agency planners list at the moment. And the first one, you'd be glad to know, was recovery. And if you, you can read some of the text that's on there, that they're getting back into their annual growth plans. But highlighted at the bottom, we will start to see more experimentation in media firsts, which is good. So they're feeling less pressured to do activation and payback and ROI, and they probably might want to take a few more risks. I thought the other thing, and you'd probably not be able to read the slide, but this was the sort of like the, um, what they thought of the year ahead. And all you need to see is the purple bar, which means you're going to do better than last year. So you've got the three at the bottom, which is your social, which includes mobile as well. You've got TV at the top and outdoor. So all the screen-based media, because you're a screen-based, a lot of screen-based companies here, are the ones that they seem to feel are going to do the best. So recovery, experimentation, and outdoor being in part of the fast-track channels. Next one was data, so the second biggest. So the importance of data to planning, the importance of data to client relationships, going deeper. How do you use data? And that's probably particularly pertinent in our own medium of digital, where when you can link data to screen-based advertising, you can get a new layer of context and relevance. The red bar is data, and this was the most important. ROI is the blue at the back, which says econometrics. So data compared to econometrics, effectiveness there. So data is becoming much more important to agency planners. And the last one is content, screen-based content. Agencies having their own content departments, looking for new relationships with major owners. You can see there amplification, help with content, content origination even. So I think all of those three things are hugely positive for us as an industry going forward. Screen-based content, we offer a screen-based challenge, backed by big data, which is becoming more prevalent in the outdoor world, and recovery, and probably good feelings about out-of-home as a medium as well. So, thinking about this, um, that was an article that was in Campaign, and it was two weeks ago. MGM, OMD, when they came back, restructured, not behind silos of outdoor TV and everything, but planning behind content. So content is the agnostic, or channel is the agnostic, and it depends on the content running through those and grown-up strategies about how you make all of your screen base work alongside and together. So I'm going to show you what we did, because we want to talk a new language. So I'm not going to talk to you about hardware. I'm not going to talk to you about software. I'm not going to talk about pixels or products. I'm going to talk about mindset language and how we should be talking, because, as you just said, You've got the marketing guy, not the tech guy. So, Channel 6 brought to you by JC Decor. And if Channel 6 was a TV channel, it would have the fifth highest national reach, weekly reach, of any commercial TV channel. That's the scale of the operation that we're now doing. But um, I used to work in TV, so I did 10 years in telly. And I used to always come here for the launch of the TV schedules. So all of the quarterly programme schedules are here. This is sort of like the home of probably content base. And Advertising Week Europe were here. And on stage, this is the normal thing that you'd see. Big stage, sponsored by ITV, through Hazlitt. It's Michael Roth from UM. Big stage, and that they were the sponsors, TV companies. And just if you want to know, that's Jean-Francois de Cour sitting just in the, in the middle. No one knows what he looks like, but that's him. And at the same time, we did exactly the same. We put the Channel 6 stage in the middle of Advertising Week Europe as a sort of little bit of a disruptive strategy. We didn't tell anyone what was it about. We just said Channel 6 has arrived. And you know there's BBC One, BBC Two, ITV3, Channel 4, Channel 5, and Channel 6 seemed to be available. So we nicked it. And we put it right in the middle of the stage where people were speaking. So just to show you, so all of the agencies, all of the clients in there, surrounded by them, we made specific interstitials or idents based on Channel 6, for every single speech that was going on, just to try to sublimely get it into people's minds. 
that what I was talking about was not products and pixels and frames and whatever, but a channel of communication. So, channel six, brought to you by JC Decor. So I'm just going to tell you the component parts of that and what we're doing. We're in three main areas at the moment. The first one is malls. Channel six in malls. Um, we've got a national footprint. We're in all of the top malls. Um, and we're building out our network of screens to 575 this year. We started the year around about 300. So we're about doubling the size of what we're doing in this space across this time frame. Channel, this is Root. 38% more likely to be upmarket women, 14% more likely to be families, 11% to be more likely to be young influentials. So we're talking about it on an audience basis in terms of national scale, reach, and certain types of people that we hit. Um, and this is just an example of the type of creative we now take. This is for Rio, launch of. It's raining in Birmingham. So we'll have had live feeds from weather and we, you know, we start to see a big change. And I'll come back and talk about the number of tactical, dynamic, non-two-week campaigns that we're now starting to take, that we're starting to lead on. And this is just a little simple example. Railways. We're in the rail environment as well. And I'll just show you exactly the same. That's where we are now mainly London-based. We're building out this year. We've got 200 not at the moment. We're building out of 400, so we're doubling the size of our real universe. And mainly it's going to all of the places around the country rather than a London base. And this, compared to malls, 80% more likely to be affluent male, 50% to be urbanites, AB, young professionals. So perhaps the antithesis of some of our sort of like mal environments as well. And just a few examples of some dynamic campaigns. It's a slightly older one for the sun. So we put the headlines up every day before the sun came out to tell people to buy the sun because that's the new headline. Couldn't resist putting that one in as a man from the northeast where we used to have, <laughs> we used to have mines and shipbuilding and a football team. Now... So that was it. And interestingly enough, we also put out the uh, announcement of the birth of um, the new prince, which got onto the headlines on our screens before it actually went out in the newspapers as well. So one-day campaigns, tactical, not your normal two-week fair. Now, classified advertising we're taking now as well. So we're taking job adverts, because you hit them in the morning, rail, it's, you know, and the jobs change every day, number of jobs available for read.co.uk. <coughs> Normally, they would never, ever have been an outdoor advertiser, and that would have been press advertising, internet advertising, but joined-up strategy. We now take it on Channel 6. Um, and last one is curated content, just showing you what we're doing with the Connected Book Club. We've now got 4,000 people on Twitter who give their book recommendations through a channel, and we set it up ourselves, curated the content ourselves, and went up on the screens, and there's a lovely little community, and Hachette knocked our door down to say, can we become involved, please, and can I monetize it for you? So content, coming back, we have, we have content that people want sponsorship and editorial, and they're willing to pay for it. And a number of larger media owners are looking for us to do exactly the same. In some articles in Campaign and some of the other places. Hachette partners with the Real Boot Club. Jessica partners with Hachette for the Twitter Boot Club. A new sort of like revenue stream, a new way of doing it not two-week advertising, curated content with a sponsor. Um, and then I'll come on to Channel 6 Tesco, which we've just launched. Um, and as some of you have probably seen the video, but I'm going to just take a rest from my own voice, and you probably want to rest from it as well. And uh, I've got a little short video that probably explains what we're trying to do better than I ever could. In 2014, a fully optimised network of digital screens across the biggest Tesco stores around the country will be launched by JC Deco, a digital channel that will transform point-of-sale advertising. We've identified the top 400 stores with the highest footfall and transactions, and by assessing each store individually, we've identified the prime location for each screen giving brands the best possible opportunity for a final purchase prompt. As one customer said, my digital memo pad at the front door. Our revolutionary, fully flexible scheduling system, JC Deco Captain, gives brands the ability to reach their consumers when they need to. 
powered by Dunhamby, the world's leading customer insight company, JC Deco can now access detailed sales figures according to category, Tesco lifestyle and life stage demographics, and subcategory sales profiles. This will deliver a multitude of new campaign opportunities and provide over 3.5 million data points to access the Tesco consumer at the most appropriate time. For the first time, brands will be able to target customers according to when they're shopping and what they're shopping for. For example, it's early morning in Tesco and customers are buying croissants, bread and other bakery items. The JC Deco Captain system will use the Dunhumby database to schedule the most appropriate copy. Guaranteeing a share of voice across the sales period, Captain will dial up and dial down playouts at the most appropriate time for that brand. Advertisers will achieve an optimized schedule, increasing ratings and value according to category. The network will also allow brands to be tactical. This is especially effective for time-specific promotions or important brand launches where heavier share of voice is essential. Digital gives the capability to instantly react to a breaking news story or a change in the weather, display last night's lottery numbers or remind people to buy a ticket for a rollover draw. An intelligent, optimized network. The smart way to engage your target market. Smart screens. Available at Tesco in 2014. Okay, so that was what we did. 400 screens outside the stores. So no loop. So beyond the loop. Everything time, geolocation specific. Ads getting served at the right time for when people are purchasing that product. So something we've never done before. Um, so abandoned the loop and moved to a much more dynamic way of both selling and also targeting ads. Um, and interestingly enough, it's allowed us to talk to many new advertisers. The interesting thing about Tesco's, just showing you here, is that's a slice of life. You would never think that Tesco's would index at 3% higher for ABs and 13% higher for ABC1 women. It just happens to be a slice of life. Everyone shops there. In fact, in these stores, 11 million people go through every week. And they go through about a couple of times every week. So it has huge scale from the start. And people have started to do, think about TV money for this. So it's playing on the television and then I sort of need to reinforce it at store. It's trade money that people are thinking about. We've taken money from online business as well. So it's not a standard two week loop. It's absolutely perhaps where we're looking to move as an industry, especially with channel six. Just want to show you some results which you may be interested in, don't know if you've seen. When we had paper posters outside a front door of the store, do you see increased sales by about 17%? Um, when we replace it with digital and put static ad ads up, sales went up by a further 9%. When we called, when we flexed the campaign, and what I mean by flex is that we, the play out suited the buying pattern for the brand, that we played it out at the time of the morning, the afternoon, or the right day of the week at the right store, we got an additional sales effect over and above that of 11. And then when we did everything, where we animated the ad and made it pertinent and optimised it outside the front door, we got a 15% sales increase on top of that. So we have the great thing here. We have the data from Dunhumby. I've got 3.5 million data points across time frames and locations. And we have the EPOS results to show that if you do it right, you get positive sales benefits and ROI in return. And that's having huge resonance, especially amongst the FMCG community, about what is possible from out of home now. It feels less like out of home and panels, and it feels more like an integrated part of screen-based advertising and content-based advertising. Um, although not part of Channel 6, I just threw in this at the last moment. I know Steve is probably here as well. So just at our airports, we're now starting to build out um, on arrivals, and arrivals has become the most important part of an airport, mainly because you're targeting the Russians, the Chinese, the Italians and everything who are coming into the country who then start to buy your Burberrys, your Mulberries and everything that at Harrods. Um, exactly the same, backed by big data, allows the flight time, you know who's coming into the country, language base, and then feed the ads to the relevant audience at the relevant time. So, I now have a national channel which build out 1,400 screens without airports up and down the country 
giving for the first time, I believe, national scale to a single medium on a single platform, which we call Channel 6. If I do build out that number this year, and we're, we're on the way to doing that, I will have the fourth biggest weekly reach of any commercial TV channel. With our plans next year, I want to overtake Channel 5 to be the third biggest. I think probably as an industry, if I had a clear channels on the street as well in London and some of the others um, on the underground, etc., if we talked a different language, people might start to think of us as a different channel rather than necessarily um, being an outdoor new role. So what's Channel 6? A new national channel for screen-based content in probably the most important space. We call it the active space. It's where everything happens. You're not, television's done a great job at associating themselves, television to the second screen in home. We own the active space where people buy things. There is, I heard you know, from both Proxima, Blipper, you're just a small, a small way away from your mobile phone as Twitter, Facebook, and everything moves to the out of home space because you access it on the go. John Lewis just recently said they had a 1,300% 1, increase in internet search during commuter hours. That's happened last Christmas. So we own the active space, and now we have the mechanics to be able to do it. But more importantly, it's a new language to describe the new capabilities within our medium. I'm going to show you a short video, and some of you might have seen it before. But actually what it's about is the hardest thing to do is not the hardware, the software, and everything like that. It's mindset. And changing mindsets, even internally within Decor and externally within the market, is the most important. So I think this short video probably sums up the effort that we have to make as an industry for changing mindsets and to take a new language forward. So anyhow, Adrian Cottrell started the dance. At the, um, at the last Daily Do Congress, and he's dancing by himself, and then Russ obviously joined him. So we now got two people who were sort of like dancing on stage. And then you just have to wait to see, you know, the first person to move, that's the one you've got to do. And then when they've moved, love them. Um, because you'll see, hopefully, once Russ and Adrian have finished their sort of like dancing moves, that Somebody else will come and join them as well. I haven't got my timing right here. There we go. I don't know who your friend is, but now he's joining. And once you've, yeah, yeah. And once you've got three people doing it, then. And yeah, I'll shut up. Do you want to just raise the volume again, and we'll finish the we'll finish the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut the video. I think you've, you, can, you can see what's happening. So that's mindset change and people doing things differently. So I'm going to share some data with you now. Um, and this is the number of both dynamic and tactical campaigns that we've been carrying on the Channel 6 network. Um, it starts in Jan 11. Um, the blue line is dynamic campaigns. Dynamic means it's got some level of live feed or data that we're putting through the sort of like the network. And tactical campaigns is not too weak campaigns, but doing things tactically, doing things for a day, hours, or perhaps in the case of Tesco's minutes. And to see the rise, and the interesting little spike here was the Olympics. And the Olympics was a fantastic time for putting our new capabilities into the sun. And the great thing is, although we, we, we did all of that stuff within the Olympics, it wasn't just for the moment. You can see that since then, We've continued that rise, the mindset change. I have more dancers coming to my network. So that has been the growth of our dynamic and tactical campaigns. And that's why I think a change of language is now due, that we start to talk about things in a completely different way. Be pleased to know I've only got a couple of small slides left. First one is uh, analog billboard outside Godalming Station. Gotcha. 
happy 52nd birthday to some bloke wearing a Sunderland strip. <laughs> I know, you can't believe I'm 52. I thought that's her. <laughs> 20, it's an old picture. 25th, it is. 25th, 7th. Interesting enough, it's my head on Kevin Phillips' body, <laughs> who unfortunately is now retired, who was also born on the 25th of the 7th. It's an auspicious date. And so I'm going to finish, I say, you know, talking a new language. Um, this is our Channel 6 for London Digital Signage Week. Six successful years of Daily Do, which was also born on the 25th of July last year. Thank you for your time.